happening now. Death threats made to Governor Bentley in lieu of Alabama's tough immigration law. We have the details. Plus, President Obama's announcement of bringing the troops home for the holidays has many reacting all over the country. And it's college football Saturday, the Battle of the Tigers as Auburn takes on LSU. Is another round of frost in the offing? I think it is. We'll talk about just how cold it will get. Coverage, community, commitment. This is WSFA 12 News at 6. We begin tonight with a developing story. One woman could face prison time after making death threats to Governor Bentley. Good evening, I'm Demetria Connor. Thanks for joining us. Authorities say a Jasper woman could face five years in jail after she sent a death threat to Governor Bentley because of Alabama's tough immigration law. 38-year-old Tiffany Morellas is accused of calling Governor Bentley's office on September 29th and telling a member of his staff, quote, tell the governor he has a book Bullet with his name on it, end quote. Morales says her fiance is an illegal immigrant. She was arrested October 1st and charged with threatening certain state officers, which is a felony. Morales' lawyer says she has medical problems and a nervous condition and should not be considered a threat. The judge ordered that she undergo a mental evaluation. We reached out to the governor's office, but staffers say they cannot comment on this case. A private funeral for Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth began today in Birmingham. Services were held at Bethel Baptist Church where Shuttlesworth once pastored. While he was there, the church and his home were bombed. He said his survival led him to fight against racial injustice in Birmingham. Reverend Shuttlesworth died earlier this month at the age of 83. A public viewing of Shuttleworth's body will be tomorrow at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And finally, a public funeral will be at Faith Chapel Christian Center in Wylam at 10 a.m. Monday. His burial will follow at the Oak Hill Cemetery near downtown Birmingham. Indy car driver Dan Weldon was laid to rest this morning in Florida. Funeral services for the two-time Indianapolis 500 winner were held at First Presbyterian Church in St. Petersburg. Weldon died Sunday in a fiery 15-car crash at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The 33-year-old leaves behind a wife and two small children. Well, it's no secret downtown Montgomery is growing and changing, but what you may not realize is how fast and how quickly it's becoming more than a place to work. WSFA 12 News reporter Bethany Wells is live near the alleyway downtown, and Bethany, I hear that's one of the most successful areas of Montgomery's downtown redevelopment project. Yeah, well, Thank you so much, Bethany. And the city of Montgomery signed a 15-year lease worth $250,000 for that alleyway extension. It will make a straight throughway walkway from Karma Street to Coosa. Well, many of you are out enjoying football and fun this Saturday all across the River Region. But will this nice weather stick around? Meteorologist Eric Snyder has that answer in today's forecast. Eric? As American troops get ready to leave Iraq, some are celebrating while others are expressing concern. From Baghdad to the campaign trail here in the States, there are difficult questions about timing and consequences of this ultimate milestone. Brian Moore has the latest. About a thousand Alabama National Guard members are on the ground in Iraq. Bringing them home safe and sound is a top priority for the Guard's leadership. Officials say they're glad to see them return. The president's jobs plan includes separate tax credits for businesses that hire veterans who have been unemployed for at least six months. Well, today is National Make a Difference Day, and many of you were doing just that. The Family Guided Center of Alabama, along with the Montgomery Area Food Bank, hosted its annual food pantry job readiness and health fair. The event took place this morning at Fresh Anointing House of Worship. Event goers were able to receive free health screenings, free food, and information that could help them find employment.
Many in Libya have lined up for a second day to view the body of former leader Muammar Gaddafi. Questions still remain about the circumstances surrounding his death as well as the future of the country. Adrienne Mong has more. The country's prime minister said a vote could come within eight months to elect the parliament or some form of Congress. Members would have to draft a new constitution and form an interim government. Statues that used to stand in Gaddafi's compound have now been moved and put on public display in Libya. Residents say the display is dedicated to the rebels' victory and struggle to oust Gaddafi's regime. They were once housed in Gaddafi's fortified compound in Tripoli. After another frosty start, it turned out to be a pleasant autumn day. But is another warm-up in the forecast? Meteorologist Eric Snyder will have that answer in his Doppler 12 Storm Vision forecast coming up next. You can't complain about 80 and sunny, and we've got about four days lined up for this. Wow. Well, I will definitely be cutting on my heat tonight. That's a pretty good call. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Thank you so sure. much, Eric. Well, covering Otaga County, man's best mm. friend got a special treat today in Prattville. Pause for a cause featured fun for our furry friends and the kitties. Our four-legged friends and their owners dressed up in costumes for a pet parade. Art pieces and dog paraphernalia were up for grabs during a silent auction. The kids enjoyed painting and playing with the animals.